All right, I'd like to invite all those forward who are going to have, remember their anniversary today. Remember the anniversary of their baptism today. Good morning. When God claimed this beloved young person in holy baptism, we made sacred promises. Parents promised to faithfully bring our children to worship, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and to provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. Sponsors, godparents, and this congregation promised in their new Christian faith and to support them and pray for them in their new life in Christ. Today, we keep our promises. The congregation may be seated. And now, what I want you par parents to do for little August is each time I read something, I want you to make the sign of the cross. Dip your finger in the baptismal font, and I will begin. That you may hear, that August may hear the good news of Christ, the Word of God. Re receive the sign of the cross on your ears. Yeah, just on your ears. There you go. That you may see the light of Christ illuminating your way. We have to get Lucy up here with you, August, so you won't be alone. We're going to do a sign of remembrance. So when we mention a part of the body, you are to take and dip your hand in the font and put a sign of the cross on that body part. And we're going to begin at the beginning. That you, Lucy and August, may hear the good news of Christ, the Word of God. Receive the sign of the cross in your ears. that you may see the light of Christ illuminating your way. Receive the sign of the cross on your, on your eyes. eyes. That you may sing the praise of Christ, the joy of the church. Receive the sign of the cross on your lips. That God may dwell within you by faith, Receive the sign of the cross on your heart. That you may bear the gentle yoke of Christ in serving. Receive the sign of the cross on your hands. That God's mercy may be known in your works. Receive the sign of the cross on your shoulders this time. That you may follow in the way of Christ, receive the sign of the cross on your feet. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. We're going to light your baptismal candles.
Congregation, please rise. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. When you were baptized, an assistant minister handed your parents a candle, I'm talking to you, August and Lucy, and, uh, and it might even be the candle you're holding now, and the assistant minister said, Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We are proud that you are a part of God's family. Gracious God, we thank you for the new life you give us through holy baptism. Especially, we ask you to bless each of these young people on the anniversary of their baptism. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. You may. Peace. Peace. Lucy, peace. The Lord be with you. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
a reading from 2 Corinthians. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost earnestness, and in love for you, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this is a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I'm giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there might be a, a fair balance. That is, that as it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little girl is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Tell, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. 
the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come up. All right, we're going to play a game here. Allie, do you want to... I want you to reach in there and feel something, and without looking, tell me what it is. I don't know. You don't know? It feels like what? A person? Well, pull it out. <laughs> it's Donald Duck. I don't think the Supreme Court gave him personhood yet. <laughs> but pretty good. It felt like a person, and it certainly looks like it. Emerson, do you want to give it a try? Can you tell what it is? Sunglasses. sunglasses. Well, good for you. Not exactly sunglasses, but... I guess they do the trick. <laughs> Isn't it amazing what our fingers can tell us? Isn't that amazing? Don't you find that amazing? Audrey, let's see what you can find. A book? Pull it out. Oh boy, that's my youth gathering Bible from 2012. I'm going to get a new one at the new youth gathering. <laughs> Saying I don't even think I'm going to try. <laughs> All right, here's the point. Our hands touch us almost, it is miraculous what we can do with our hands. We can see with our hands, right? We can feel and not know what that is, but we can sort of see it in our mind. It feels like a person. Well, it's Donald Duck. It feels like a book. And it was. It feels like sunglasses. See how we can see with our touch? It's just so incredible. And that's, our touch is on all the time. You can't turn it off. We feel all the time. Well, Jesus showed us how important touch was. He was touched by one person, a woman, and as soon as she touched his cloak, she was healed. And then he touched a little girl, 12 years old. Any of you 12 yet? 12 years old, he touched her. You know what? Jesus wasn't supposed to touch her because a, a good Jewish person doesn't touch anyone who's dead. But he touched her, and she came alive. Isn't touch wonderful? Well, I like to be able to see with my fingers. It's so great. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We ask that you touch us. Make us whole. Help us believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may go back to your seats. It's been a long week. I don't know if your week's been long or not, but mine has. And it's been a, yesterday was a long day. We had a wedding and all other kinds of events. Today we're going to talk about healing and hope. 
and whether or not we really like healing. Yes, this is my sermon. <laughs> Let me begin with a story. I wasn't, I wasn't going to begin with the story, but it, it uh, uh, might be a good place to begin. Delmer Clinton, who I've uh, mentioned before, he's a pastor in North Carolina. He tells a story one day of uh, he was asked to be the, the pastor, the stewardship pastor at a friend's church. And what that meant was he would go to his friend's church and preach the sermon on the day that they had their consecration Sunday when everyone brought in their tithes, their, their pledge cards, their commitment cards. So he went and he was the, uh, the stewardship pastor. And the text was a healing text, much like the one we have today. And he said, oh, if we're going to have that text, we just have to have a healing service and have everyone come that wants to be healed and, and uh, have, be anointed with oil and have prayer. Uh, his friend was a little reluctant, but finally said, okay, we'll do it. It'll be a busy day, but we'll do it all. So they did. And uh, they were surprised that most of the people in the congregation came forward for the healing portion. They, uh, their pledges came in higher than they expected. They had a community meal after the second service. It was a good day. A few weeks later, he, Dalmer says he gets a call from his friend, the pastor of that church. He says, you'll never believe what happened. I had a visit from a guy who said, I've never been in a Lutheran church before, but I came for the first time on your commitment Sunday. And he said, I want you to know a little bit about myself. I am a recent parolee from prison. And I vowed that I'm going to start going to church. I need to turn my life around. I'm, going to, go, I'm going to start going to church. And he said, I came to your church because I don't have a car and I could walk to your church. So he said I was there and I, I decided I was going to participate. I was going to do everything everybody else did. So I got there at the 8 o'clock service, uh, listened to the sermon, went to the, uh, came up for the healing service. I even made filled out a commitment card and made a pledge. And my pledge said, I don't have a job now, but I'll give what I can whenever I can. And he said, I then went to the Sunday school class. And somebody was talking to me there and said, hey, you need to come to our congregational dinner. So I waited in the library during the second service and I went to the dinner, had a fine time, met a lot of people and had a fine time. And can you imagine, left the house before 8 o'clock, I didn't get home until after 3 in the afternoon. And when I got home, I opened the door to my room, he was in a boarding house, and he said, boy, I look around and there on the table is the ashtray overflowing with cigarette butts. And I go, oh, I haven't had a cigarette since I left home. I need a cigarette. So he said he went and he lit up a cigarette and he breathed it in and he said, it tasted terrible. I couldn't stand it. I had to put it out. And he came to the pastor and he said, I know what happened to me. When I came forward for healing, he said, you asked me, what do you want healing for? And I, and I said, I want to be cured of my addictions. And he said, but I liked smoking. <laughs> but I liked smoking. Well, the whole point is, Jesus heals 
heals desperate people, and I guess a corollary to that is that sometimes we don't like to be healed. We want to nurse all of our addictions and there's certain things that we love that we want to nurse and keep going. This week, past two weeks, have been uh, very tumultuous in a way for our country. We had two Supreme Court decisions this week, which Supreme Court decisions, there's always winners and always losers and they always cause a, a, a lot of debate and uproar and argument and divisiveness. But we have a great nation that seems to weather all that and uh, work out all those things. But probably the most troubling still is what happened a week ago Wednesday night at Mother Emanuel AME Church in South Carolina. Nine black people killed. Terrible thing. Our country is still reeling from that. But there were hopeful signs. I don't know if you saw the hope. I saw the hope for healing in the funeral. T two things that uh, bear repeating. First, uh, the Right Reverend John Richard Bryant, he's the senior bishop of the AME Church, and he said this, Someone should have told the young man, referring to Dylan Roof, the um, accused killer, somebody should have told the young man he wanted to start a race war, but he came to the wrong place. Now, I don't believe he was referring to South Carolina. I think he was referring to a church. That church where they wouldn't allow a race war to start. I thought that showed great hope in healing. President Obama, in his eulogy, picked up on that when he said, it was an act, meaning the killing, it was an act that drew on a long history of bombs and arson and shots fired at churches. Not random, but as a means of control, a way to terrorize and oppress, an act that he, the killer, imagined would incite fear and recrimination, violence and suspicion, an act that he presumed would deepen divisions that trace back to our nation's original sin. And then he said, Oh, but God works in mysterious ways. God has different ideas. He, the killer, didn't know he was being used by God. He was being used by God uh, in President Obama's uh, understanding. Used to show there's a way of peace. Maybe as a way to heal our racism. And very often we just sort of keep nurturing that racism rather than letting it be healed. So our prayer today should be, God, heal us. Well, in our text, two people who are desperate people come to Jesus. The first is Jairus, a leader in the synagogue, presumably a rich person. Notice he has a name. The woman didn't have a name. He came and he begged Jesus. Repeatedly, the text says, he begged Jesus to come and heal his daughter. One wonders why Jairus didn't send a servant because the servants came later, right, and said, don't bother Jesus anymore, your daughter's dead. Most scholars believe they wouldn't go. They wouldn't humiliate themselves and degrade themselves by going to an itinerant, itinerant preacher like Jesus and ask for help. 
Josie Jarus was desperate. Please come heal my daughter. Repeatedly, he asked. And then Jesus is touched. His, his clothing is touched by a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years. A nameless woman. And Jesus now, an outcast from society because anyone who had a bodily discharge like that was an outcast, an unclean person. Jesus turns to her when she finally came to him and admitted what had happened and she, Jesus didn't give her a name but gave her status, daughter. Your faith has healed you. Jesus goes on and now raises that desperate man, Jairus' daughter from the dead. Well, Jesus comes to us in our desperation. And we should all be desperate for healing in our nation, the trifles and the bickering and the divisions and the racism. We should be, have very desperate feelings about that. We all have desperation in our lives. Often, we won't admit it, will we? Oh, I can make it on my own. I don't need help. But Jesus is there to touch us, to heal us, to make us whole. If you remember a great song, we don't sing it much anymore, we should probably sing it more often, Abide With Me. That was written by the Reverend Henry F. Light. It was written the very day he was told by his doctor that he was going to die within three weeks. And the reason he was going to die is he had consumption. He had tuberculosis, and tuberculosis was so common the doctor could tell him how long he had. He went home and he wrote these words. I fear no foe at hand to bless. Ills have no weight, no tears, no bitterness. Where is death sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. And then there's one line in the hymn that says it all. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Jesus heals. He touches us. And he will make us whole. He abides with us. Amen.
Trusting the Spirit's power, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. For the Church of Christ, that as we are strengthened in faith, we will be sent forth in peace. Gracious God, we pray for the healing of our nation, especially the healing of racial division. Lord, in your mercy. God of life, as we near our Independence Day celebration, fill our nation and its leaders with the spirit of freedom. Guide us that we may live into the ideals of liberty, healthy liberty, and justice for all. And may that extend, may those benefits extend throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. For those who cry out from disease, distress, poverty, or power. Send your healing, especially to Pat and Bud Brown, John Burke, Mary Lou Cordero, Pat English, Jackson Gilbert, Karen Goette, Dustin Jones, Frank Kimsey, Jim Lampy, Karen Larson's dad and cousin, Scotty Inman, Alan Malcolm, Sherry Palermo, John Reynolds, Chris Snyder, and Wayne Sproul. Are there any others? Our hearts wait for you with thankful hope as we offer our words of gratitude and praise. We thank you for the gift of families and love. We pray that you bless the marriage of Brian and Jordan Schwabauer yesterday. And bless our children, especially those celebrating the anniversary of their baptisms. Out of the depths we call to you to give your resurrection life to all who have died. Comfort those who grieve, especially the friends and family of Denny Kinzer, Alex Shives, Paul Shaner, Jeffrey Hansen, Richard Miller, and Rose McGeals. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, gracious God, and those prayers known only to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, <clears throat> therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity we share with all your people and the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Wise and generous God, we thank you that all at this holy table you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and call others to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements. As you uh, have probably read in here, it says um, Pastor and Mick are on vacation July 2nd through the 4th. It's not exactly a vacation. We're going to Kansas City, but we're leaving. I, I just want to show you how many vacation days I get here. We're leaving late Thursday afternoon. So Thursday won't be a vacation day. That's the 2nd. The third is my day off, anyway, that's Friday. And um, the fourth, I think I deserve a holiday. <laughs> but I'll be back the fifth, so next Sunday I will be here. Cassie. Okay, Tracy put that in there without <laughs> consulting me, as you can see. <laughs> I just had a couple of quick things. On July 12th, we are going to have a youth parent meeting, and we would love for any of you guys that have youth of any ages to come to that meeting. We're going to talk about what we're going to do for staffing and youth ministers and, and that activities and that kind of thing. So we would love to get your input about where we're going forward, and we have some exciting things planned and would like to get everyone's opinion and ideas and that kind of thing. The other thing is that uh, if you have not received an email from me about Camp Tomashinga and you think you are registered or want to go, please let me know. Um, to, we want to make sure everybody that wants to go can go and is going. There is, it's not too late to sign up, so uh, let me know. And that uh, camp date, they'll leave on July 12th, the same day we're having the youth meeting. So it's going to be great fun. I know Madison, my older daughter, they absolutely loved it last year. So I would highly encourage your kiddos to go if you have that opportunity. Thank you. And that meeting on the 12th, we do want input from parents who have youth, but it might be something of interest to just about anybody. So you are all invited. Don't feel just because you don't have youth, you can't be there. Because you might be, find that interesting too. I don't think I have anything more to say, except receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace 
be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome.